Coming up on News Live at 6, snow in April. Not as crazy as you might think for Syracuse. I'll have that and your weather for the solar eclipse in just a bit. Plus, a new ballet company is making its debut performance on Saturday. Get an inside look on how they're getting ready for the big day. And just how busy is Syracuse Airport? News Live at 6. This is Citrus TV News Live at 6, your campus news leader. Welcome into News Live at 6. I'm Peyton Spellacy. And I'm Zach Richter. We'll get to those top stories in a moment, but we're going to begin with those April showers. Let's get right to our Spencer Conzel, who joins us now live from the Citrus TV weather deck. And Spencer, can you talk to us about how much snow are we going to be seeing tomorrow and how long is the rain going to continue for? Yeah, Zach, those April showers have kind of turned into April snow storms to a certain degree. Right now, though, that rain has turned into hail, which isn't great, but is what we're going to be seeing pretty much throughout uh, the next few hours here as the temperatures drop. Right now, it's about 40 degrees. The temperatures are going to go down to just above that freezing point temperature. So the snow we're going to be getting overnight, it's going to turn into snow at around 2 or 3 a.m. fully. and. That snow, since it's not going to be below 32 degrees, it's not going to be the most, uh, you know, thick snow ever. It's going to kind of be more loose. I wouldn't expect it to stay on the ground for very long, um, especially as it's only going to be in these lower 30 degrees for just a little while uh, throughout the day tomorrow as it gets back up in the 40s. So I wouldn't expect the snow to stick around. Uh, it will be getting warmer in the future, but the rain isn't really going anywhere. That's all I've got for weather for now. I'll see you back inside in just a few minutes. Spencer, it looks miserable out there. Hopefully you'll be back and warm here in the studio. Right now, the Engineering Meets Business Lecture Series is holding a virtual discussion with Syracuse alumnus Aaron Gerstenberg. Gerstenberg is the joint CEO of Clean Harbor's Environmental Services. The discussion centers around his path to success after graduation. Gerstenberg received a Bachelor of Science degree in Aerospace Engineering from Syracuse in 1990. And for students receiving their acceptance letters, Falk College is hosting an admit students information session for sport analytic majors in just a few hours. The virtual session will discuss academics, experiential learning, and study abroad. The director of sport analytics program is hosting the event alongside admission staff and current students. The session will run from 8 to 9 tonight. And Syracuse University Libraries is hosting a, work a workshop to teach engineering students how to leverage their research opportunities with Micron. The workshop demonstrates the global engineering landscape. They'll discuss Micron Tech's research output, learn about trends in semiconductor research, and identify potential collaborators for future projects. The virtual session runs from 2 to 3 tomorrow. And short stories author Debbie Urbanski is holding a book signing and discussion about her first novel tomorrow afternoon. Afterworld is a fantasy novel set in the future about artificial intelligence. Urbanski earned her master's in creative writing from SU in 2004. Free copies of the novel will be given to the first 50 people who RSVP and more details can be found on the Syracuse Events Calendar website. A new ballet company will make its debut performance in Syracuse this weekend. Our Michael Lamort has the details on how Central New York Ballet is preparing to put on the world-famous Swan Lake and Bolero shows. At Dance Center North, the CNY Ballet Company has been working hard for its upcoming performance at the On Center and choosing well-known productions like Swan Lake and Bolero for its debut performance means the pressure is on. We're a baby company, so to be putting on a production of this scale already is a huge deal. Um, so it's, it's definitely nerve-wracking, but I think those are the best things in life, like they move you forward. Lucy Hamilton, who landed her dream role as Odette in Swan Lake, says CNY Ballet and its artistic leader, Aldo Catone, have been working hard to bring the company's mission alive in this performance. We want to open ballet uh, to everyone. I feel like the only way to, to grow as a, as a community in a city like, like here in Syracuse is to to be an actual community. And to make that natural community, the company put aside a number of tickets free of charge for those who may not be able to afford them. Any chance we can to just 
bring it to anybody. Um, we don't want it to feel exclusive at all. NCMI Ballet is saying that if you're interested in seeing this performance right here at the On Center, you can do so by getting your tickets by their website. They cost 30 to $40. But you might want to act fast because Ticketmaster will be reselling them for over $50. If you're a student, you can email CNY Ballet at gmail.com to avoid those Ticketmaster fees. From the On Center, Mike Lamort, Citrus TV News. Michael, thanks so much. The Swan Lake and Bolero performances will kick off Saturday afternoon with two shows beginning at 2 and 7 p.m. And now the latest as an Onondaga Community College alumna is receiving national recognition for her Down Syndrome advocacy work. Kayla McKinn is taking home the Outstanding Alumni Award at the American Association of Community Colleges Conference next week. Now, in 2021, she became the first federal lobbyist with Down syndrome and has helped pass legislation benefiting those with disabilities. McKeon is six OCC alumnus to be honored by the organization. While many of us were out enjoying St. Patrick's Day, one bear cub wasn't so lucky. A few weeks ago, police officers received a call reporting a bear cub in a cab of an excavator in Jefferson County. There he is right there up on our screen. The owner of the excavator says he was removing trees when he accidentally destroyed a bear den. The cub then ran into the tracks of the machine and hid in the cab. Conservation police officers removed the cub who is now in care of a wildlife center in Greene County until the little guy is ready for release. And March has been a busy month for the Syracuse Hancock International Airport and city records say this is the fifth busiest month the airport's seen since 2005. TSA officers screened just over 140,000 travelers last month. A busier checkpoint means travelers should prepare to arrive well before their flight. The increased traffic comes after the airport reported its busiest year on record last year. A meeting between Syracuse neighbors and advocates last night focused on the recent tragic losses of children in the community. Among the primary focuses were recent losses of Ashton Deganzi and Nefertiti Harris. The meeting targeted solutions to preventing future losses. One of the solutions proposed was implementing a board to monitor school attendance. And we're five days away from the solar eclipse, and if you're planning on watching it, make sure your town is still in the list of places expected to see darkness. Astronomers say the path of totality for the upcoming solar eclipse has shifted slightly. The change has pushed towns like Marietta, Navarino, Owasco, and Dresden out of totality. The path will be 2,000 feet further north than previously thought. So why the change? Well, astronomers discover the sun is slightly bigger than the size that has been accepted by scientists since the late 1800s. A Cortland Cannabis Dispensary is still waiting for a license after three years. Lakehouse Cannabis was registered as an official New York State business in 2021 and hasn't been allowed to make a single sale. Lakehouse is among hundreds of other cannabis businesses waiting for the New York State Office of Cannabis Management to work through license approvals. Governor Kathy Hochul has called the process a, quote, disaster and directed a full review of the agency. We have new information now from the Fayetteville Manulist School District as the superintendent gave an update on the incident last week that saw a car speed past a stopped school bus. Dr. Craig Trife Path praised the bus driver for their speedy response and he urges drivers to stop for school buses to prevent another incident. Manulist police arrested 66-year-old Quang Pham of Syracuse after an off-duty state trooper saw his car. Pham faces a charge of reckless endangerment as well as other traffic violations. A new report reveals one in eight New Yorkers have student loan debt totaling nearly $93 billion. New York lawmakers are working to do something about the staggering debt. Senator Kirsten Gildebrand has been vocal in sponsoring legislation to increase student loan forgiveness. Both Gillibrand and Governor Kathy Hochul have previously passed legislation funding education for students pursuing STEM degrees in New York. Coming up after the break, a New York congressional race is heating up with a new challenger, who they are and their initiatives. Plus, results for the presidential primaries in the state are out. What this means for New Yorkers. Citrus TV News continues in just two minutes. Welcome to an excellent episode of Live from Studio B. <laughs>
You're watching Citrus TV News live at 6 with Peyton Spellacy, Zach Richter, and Spencer Conjol. Now, your campus news leader continues. Welcome back to Citrus TV News Live at 6. All New York congressional districts are reaching primary season within the next two months. However, one district in Long Island, New York 3rd, has a new Republican challenger. A Barstool sports influencer has thrown his hat into the ring. And here to break down more of the situation is our very own Peter Berry. Well, Peyton and Zach, New York's 3rd congressional district cannot seem to stay out of the news. After changing hands twice this congressional term with former Republican Congressman George Santos having been expelled from office, it is now held by Democrat Tom Suozzi after a special election in February. But the race to unseat Congressman Suozzi is heating up as a number of Republican candidates have stepped forward. One of them is the barstool personality Billy Cotter, or Billy Football. As he announced he was jumping into the race and now he is trying to gain signatures to get on the ballot. But Cotter will need 1,250 from registered Republicans to reach the New York 3rd Republican primary on June 25th. The, new pri the primary itself is also a very contested race with former New York State Assemblyman Mike LaPietri. He's backed by the Nassau County GOP and the, another challenger who's in second place is Greg Hake, who and they also have Jim Toes of my hometown in Manhasset also gathering signatures as well. But let's transition over to the Democratic side where Tom Swazi will be running for re-election. No challengers have faced him yet, but he's also running in a newly drawn district as he removed Massapequa and added Huntington and Cold Spring Harbor. But if you were wondering how our former New York 3rd Congressman George Santos was doing, well, he's being a little bit of a Twitter troll. Even today, he was asking his followers if he should join OnlyFans. But we will see the fate of this district in November. Peyton and Zach, back to you. Thanks so much, Peter. Now, staying in New York, the results for the presidential primaries are in. President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump both won by a landslide. And New York doesn't offer the additional option of voting uncommitted if voters want to register a protest vote. So let's take a look at the results on your screen now. In the Democratic primaries, Biden won by over a 90% majority. Both of Biden's opponents, Marianne Williamson and Dean Phillips, scored under 5% of the vote. Phillips has been the only candidate to endorse Biden for re-election. Meanwhile, in the GOP primaries, Trump won by over an 80% majority. Nikki Haley, who dropped out of the race last month, took nearly 13% of the vote. Trailing behind the both of them is former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, scoring 4% of the vote after dropping out in January. Both Haley and Christie haven't yet publicly endorsed a candidate. And Peyton, as Biden and Trump are likely to see a rematch in November, they are focusing on their campaign on issues regarding women. Biden is campaigning to restore Roe v. Wade. He published this commercial after Florida Supreme Court cleared the way for a six-week abortion ban to start next month. Take a listen. I'm running to make Roe v. Wade the law of the land again, so women have a federal guarantee to the right to choose. Donald Trump doesn't trust women. I do. And after the break, I'll have your full five-day forecast and uh, the history of rain in April. Stay with us. I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Oh Our back and forth. It always came back. Thanks, kid. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Welcome to my house. Lately, not my happy place. Everybody's pretty tired of each other. The parents were not themselves. My little brothers were morphing into small creatures. The walls were closing in. Clearly a case of too much family, too close, 24-7. And there's a lot of that going around right now. If this sounds like your house, try going someplace new. Yourlifeyourvoice.org. 
you'll find lots of ideas to help you handle the family stresses of being confined to close quarters. YourLifeYourVoice.org. It might not get you out of the house, but it could help you find a little more breathing room. From the Citrus TV Weather Center, this is SU's most accurate weather forecast. Welcome back to News Live at 6. Let's take a look at our radar right now about this rainstorm that's coming through right now. Uh, this is uh, from 2 p.m. today until around 4 p.m. tomorrow. So you can see that storm that's going to last throughout the night and turn to snow a little bit as we get later into the night is going to clear up, which is good news. Uh, as you can see, Thursday, we've got that snow that, we're that we keep talking about. Hopefully one of the last snows of the year before those nice warm summer temperatures hit. Some rain on Friday, Saturday, cloudy, 40 degrees. But Sunday and Monday is where things start to look up. 51 degrees on Sunday. And for our solar eclipse here, you can see the little diagram that I made. We've got a 60 degree high, which uh, is pretty nice, a good temperature for Syracuse. And things are looking to get even warmer as we get into the rest of next week. Now, April is a, is a rainy month. They say April showers bring May flowers. Well, how rainy is April going to be for Syracuse? Last year, we had seven days of rain, 13 cloudy days, and 10 sunny days, which is about the average. 2020, about the same, a bit more cloud than precipitation. And uh, 2020, sorry, that's supposed to say 2015 there at the bottom. We had more sunny days as well with some precipitation mixed in there. The average since 1991 is 10 rainy days in Syracuse. So let's hope we're getting a lot of those rainy days out of the way now in early April so we can make way for some nice sunny days later in April. And you know what I love on a rainy day is a nice bagel. Peyton and Zach, I hear there's some news about schoolyard bagel. You know what, sister? That's what I was about to say. No matter the weather, I'm always going to want a bagel <laughs> in the morning. And bagel lovers better listen up. Schoolyard Bagels is now accepting Q's cash. Students can swipe their ID cards at the Marshall Street shop to pay. I actually tried it this morning. It is very simple and easy, <laughs> and Schoolyard announced the change on their Instagram today and with a sign on their door. They also announced 10% discounts for military and first responders. Okay, Zach, I feel like the times where they've been opened, every time I want to go, they're closed, but you've tried it. What's the verdict? So I actually didn't just go this morning. I went la yesterday morning, mm -hmm. too. It's not just the, uh, I think the egg and cheeses are great, and the bagels with cream cheese are eh, not as good. Okay, and I feel like you know your bagels, so you're a good <laughs> guy to talk to about this. So you heard it here first. The company that provides everything from household appliances to electricity needed to run those appliances has officially split. General Electric, known as GE, announced in 2021 they would break into three public companies. That's GE Vernova, GE Aerospace, and GE Healthcare. And yesterday, it marked two of the companies first day on the stock market. This indicates the completion of multi-year restructuring program after the company faced major debt. But this move to prove them right as the aerospace stock is now soaring. They plan to announce their first quarter earnings in just 20 days. And if you're looking for a job that may drive you nuts, Planters it has an opportunity for you. The well-known peanut company is looking for three college graduates to drive the famed nutmobile all across America. But before you get that resume, though, the, the company has a few requirements for those looking to apply. Applicants will need a driver's license, a bachelor's degree in the communications field, and most importantly, a proficiency for nut-related plans. Puns, not <laughs> plans. I would say every time the nutmobile is here in Syracuse, everyone has their phones out, everyone's taking pictures. Yep. So hopefully we get to see it this year. Maybe we even see a Syracuse grad in there too. And true, and moving from nuts to sports, Gino, <laughs> and she, Gino Antimarino, are there any nuts in sports? Well, I, I don't know about that, Zach, but Syracuse <laughs> men's lacrosse traveled to Ithaca for a matchup against Cornell last night. I guess you could say it was a little nutty, but I'll be breaking down that game and more when we come back. Jason, let's go see your room. What do you think? We kept it a little spare, so you can decorate it how you like. Dinner! Go. Excellent. Soccer, soccer. Yeah, I saw you guys out there. We're in the room. We're in the room. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were on my team.
And now, your Citrus TV Sports Report. Well, as you just heard on the forecast a little bit ago from Spencer Conjol, the weather is pretty rainy and gloomy here in central New York. And gloomy is a perfect way to describe number four Syracuse men's lacrosse's 18 to 17 double overtime loss to number 13 Cornell last night. Welcome into sports. I'm Gino Antamarino. Now, it wasn't all bad for the Orange. SU jumped out to a 7-0 lead after the first quarter, but the Big Reds slowly but surely chipped away at Syracuse's control. And with 10 seconds left on the game clock, Cornell took a 17-16 lead. SU attackman Sam English tied things up with a buzzer-beating tally, but Big Red attackman CJ Kirst would end it in double OT for the seniors' fifth goal of the game. Syracuse head coach Gary Gates said his team was right there, but no cigar. But we had opportunities. We had tons of opportunities throughout that second half and overtime to put this game away, and unfortunately, we didn't make plays. What did they come? Not making plays at the end of the game is a good way to put it. Syracuse's three goals in the second half marked a season low. As far as overtime, well, the Orange have now lost all three games this season that required extra time. Staying on the turf and in Ithaca, number three Syracuse women's lacrosse smacked Cornell 17 to four yesterday in its last non-conference game of the regular season. SU attacker Olivia Adamson continues to spark her team's offense. The junior notched four goals, five points, and helped the Orange to their seventh straight win. Syracuse aims to keep that streak alive against Pittsburgh on Saturday. The Panthers sit at the bottom of the ACC standings with zero victories in conference play. Opening draw is at four from Cicero North Syracuse Stadium. You can follow our Citrus TV women's lacrosse beat reporter at Rahil Jaswal on Twitter for live game updates. And a blockbuster move has been made by the Buffalo Bills earlier today. Wide receiver Stephon Diggs, as well as draft pick compensation, have been traded to the Houston Texans in exchange for a 2025 second rounder. Diggs spent the last four seasons with the Bills, where he recorded nearly 40 touchdowns and well over 5,000 receiving yards. To go along with his individual accolades, Diggs helped lead Buffalo to four straight divisional first place finishes and an AFC championship game appearance in 2021. Okay, Gino, I want to revisit women's lacrosse. So you said they're going to they're, they're going to keep the streak alive with their next game, but how do you think they're going to finish the season? <sighs> well, I Everything's looking good for Syracuse women's lacrosse. I mentioned it, seven straight games on a win streak. They're 6-0 and in conference play. I think that they're really going to pull, make a chance, make a run for the NCAA tournament. Kind of a disappointing end to last season, but I think Syracuse is going to bounce back in this one. And who you got for Saturday? I'm going to say Syracuse all the way by a landslide. Pittsburgh is not a very good team. Syracuse is going to take it. Okay, well, thanks so much. Thank we have wake-up weather still to come. We'll be right back. When you wake up tomorrow morning, temperatures are going to be similar to how they're going to be today. 
within the upper 30s, lower 40s, it's going to feel a bit colder, about 10 degrees less than it actually is. And that snow that's going to start overnight is going to continue until about 11 a.m. around noon tomorrow, where hopefully it should clear up and just be cloudy for the rest of the day. Well, thanks so much, Sensor. And you know where else gets gloomy weather? The UK. It's always gloomy over there. And we've talked about this story once before. A man has pleaded guilty to stealing the solid golden toilet from the Blenheim Palace. <laughs> It's six million dollars. Last time I spoke about this with Nicole, the four men were just charged. Yeah, James Sheaton was the one who pleaded guilty to stealing the golden toilet back in 2019. The other three are still pleading not guilty. Now, Sheen will be serving a 17-year sentence for numerous thefts, including the toilet and trophies from the National Horse Racing Museum. This is just a wild story. It is, and you know what? Before it wasn't stolen, you could pay money to sit on the toilet. And you and I both studied abroad in London. Was this something you would have paid for, Zach? To no, <laughs> no, I don't know, not me. Spencer, Is it expensive? How it was $3. Three mm, oh, maybe, maybe. That. maybe. Well, I would consider it. I don't know, Did you priorities. Pay $3? Uh, I, don't, I don't know about that. Uh, maybe not, maybe not. <laughs> I'm still wondering where this toilet is. People don't know. <laughs> She needs to fess up. Where is it? <laughs> All right. Well, that's Citrus TV News Live at 6 for this Wednesday. <laughs> Don't forget, you can follow us on X and Instagram at Citrus TV News. Now for the entire Citrus TV News team, I'm Peyton Spellacy. And I'm Zach Richter. Have a great night, Syracuse.